the single most important thing I could tell a developer to progress in their skills and understanding. So I guess that would have to be to be self-confident and don't follow. Uh, so let me explain. Um, one of the biggest hurdles for software developers that I see from you know training software developers up um, is the simple fact that they feel they need to understand a whole bunch of terms and patterns and designs and um, all these fancy terms. Um, and that really hinders their self-belief that they can understand something because all of these patterns and styles and reasons you do things come about through experience. The people that have made these patterns are people that have been in the industry a long time. They weren't around when they were doing this. They made a program, they made the same mistakes that you guys will make. And then they figured out there must be a better way of doing this. So they tried a thousand different ways, um, similar to Edison creating the light bulb. There's a thousand attempts before, you know, a thousand failures before a success. Um, but the difference is you, you kept going and going and going and going until you found success. So really you've got to have, um, you know, that, that self-belief, if you will, that self-confidence to keep going and not be afraid of the failure um, and ultimately to find a solution. So kind of back to the point of, you know, the standards. So the standards come about when people, you know, tried hard enough and weren't afraid to keep trying to come up with something that worked better. Um, for them, in a certain environment, it was a certain application at the time or a certain program. And then the next time they made another program, they found out that following that same style or that same pattern worked for them in multiple occasions. And that's where standards come about when they work in multiple, you know, environments, if you will, or multiple situations. Um, but until you've got the real world experience and you've made those mistakes, the biggest learning that I do with anything from software, hardware, soldering, mechanics, anything, anything I do, the biggest and single most important thing to learning um, is to make your mistakes. Don't listen to somebody, don't follow, don't tell, you know, somebody will come along and say, um, let's take it outside of software. Let's say your car is um, chucking out black smoke and somebody comes along and tells you, oh, that's your head gasket on your car. So don't just take that for face value. Um, one, because it's likely wrong anyway. Uh, but two, if you want to learn that, don't go and just read up on, uh, well, you can. You can do some reading up and say about what causes black smoke in a car, for example. Um, and again, you'll read what people will tell you, but then to really understand that, you need to get your hands dirty on a car. And you need to try and, one, get a working car and break it so it produces black smoke. And two, prove then that if you've broken a car in a certain way, um, and you've got it to produce too much black smoke. Uh, say you've pulled out a, a vacuum uh, on a turbo so it never spins up and it's always dumping its air. So now you've got less air, more fuel, you'll get black smoke. Um, so you could then say, okay, I've just pulled out a certain regulator out of one of my uh, vans. It's now chucking out black smoke. I've understood that apparently that causes black smoke. Maybe that's the only thing that causes black smoke. So now you can go to your broken uh, car or to a car that you want to prove the point of, and you can try and mimic that behavior. And the point of this is to bring it back into the coding world, uh, which is much easier than the real world, that to do that on a car is expensive. To do it in software, to prove your theories or your understanding or your knowledge, it's free and it's easy. You can make mistakes, you can break code, you can build code back up. Uh, but the way you will truly understand code and, and something that you know is really to break it and build it back up and to have that self-confidence to to do that, uh, to say, right, I think that this is how something works, so let's prove it. And then let's also not have the fear of saying, it works, don't touch it, leave it. Actually try to break your own code to prove your knowledge. So if you really think you've understood a certain point of code or a certain thing in code, the best way to validate your theory, if you will, is to then say, well, if that is what I believe and that works, this certain thing that I do should break the code. And then, you know, try that. And that will really enhance your uh, knowledge. Um, and then back to the point of, you know, not to follow. Don't worry about learning all these standards and names and terms. First, simply make some applications, build some calculators, build some games, build some websites. Um, and don't go implementing standards until you've found a need for them. So don't just you know, follow and go, okay, we need to do this and this is why. You can do that. That's one way of doing things. But on the side, you can be making a program 
and just do it your way. Do it a way that you understand, that you feel comfortable with and confident with. And don't let anybody tell you different. If it works the way you want it to work and it's it's working, it's fine. That's it. That's your your code. It works how you want it. That's all you need to do. You don't need to be following standards for it to be correct or successful. Um, and then what you will find is over time, say you make a whole uh, calculator program in Windows Forms and you don't use, say, MVBM and you build all the code in one big class and you don't comment anything, that's all fine. You'll do that. And then somebody will come along and say, oh, I wanna buy that calculator, but I want you to upgrade the UI, it looks terrible. Can you use WPF? Okay, no problem. And then you'll go to start to migrate your code to WPF and you'll find that now all of your hard coded events and code that are in the back end of the UI now need to be ripped out, copy and pasted and tweaked to work in WPF. You do that enough in your career and you'll eventually want a solution better than having to copy and paste and merge. And eventually you'll stumble across either finding out about MVVM style of programming or you'll solve that problem yourself in your own unique way, which might become the new standard, which is better than MVVM. But the point is then you'll have found an issue and you'll have then found a solution through either you know research or your own knowledge and you'll be comfortable going now I understand why I've done that as opposed to going backwards and saying I want to learn MVVM because 10 jobs want me to know MVVM and there's a, a job posting that wants me to know this technology or I simply have heard about this term and everybody's talking about it I want to know it that is not the way to learn there's too many technologies too many terms too many standards to ever understand fully um, and until you understand the reason why they come about, you're going to find it very difficult. Um, and I think that's why so many people struggle to understand the WPF's MVVM style of uh, UI, because it's it's not really been used that much, even though it's a very good way of doing UI code. Not many people have experienced the issues that caused us to want to do it that way. Um, so, you know, that's why you'll struggle. But at the same time, don't worry if you don't understand um, terms and frameworks and things, that's not an issue. Don't let that hinder your development and don't let that make you think you're not a good developer. Simply believe that what you know is what you know and, and build what you want to do um, and progress that way. But you know, don't give up that belief um, and certainly don't just simply follow for the sake of following.